If you are an architect interested in creating site diagrams like this, here are 10 steps that I used and want to show you in this tutorial from a high level view. And this is actually a technique or a workflow that I learned from Russ Tyson. If you don't know who he is, he runs an amazing Instagram page and he's also a principal at Wittenberg Architects and he shares these kind of drawings on his page, which he actually provided a few of his case study files inside my Morphology Trace Masterclass. So step number one in this process is to load in your background, which comes in as a satellite image like this. So if I zoom out a little bit more, you can see the full extent of what I brought in. And this is entirely possible with the built-in Apple maps. So if you just go ahead and type in your address, you're going to be able to select the extent of the view. So in this case, this is the, the project that I worked on for my previous firm in San Francisco. And it's actually been recently completed and I got a chance to photograph this house myself. This is the first step just to loading this satellite view. Now, after I've loaded in the satellite view, there's a couple of important information that I want to overlay on this, like the site survey. So if I just single tap on the site survey, this is going to bring in the PDF that you see here. And on this site survey, you can bring into scale. So you can see the contour lines, the property maps, some of the important vegetation and the tree placement on this property. So this is generally something that we'll have in all the projects is a site survey. And on top of this site survey, I want to show you is also a floor plan, as built floor plan. So this would be from a vendor that goes into the house to survey the elevations, the floor plans, the sections. So typically this is most likely a different set of PDFs that may have a little bit more information that's missing from the site survey. So in this particular example, you'll see that it's missing the stairs, some of the landscape elements. If I turn it off, you can see that the site survey doesn't include this path and some of the other information. And also you just kind of want to check the precision between the two to see if both are really adding up to the same place. And for the most part, it does, but it is an important part of this process. Sometimes they have skylights that you may not see from the site survey. So after bringing in this floor plan, you'll see this orientation is has shifted a little bit, but our true north is actually up. The true north is always going to be up when you bring it in, as you can see in this north arrow right here. And the next thing that I'm interested in is to bring in a sun diagram. So this sun diagram is also oriented to the north, as you will see. And I have overlaid it to the extent of the drawing right here. And you have to be a little bit more thoughtful about how big or the size of the sun diagram, because that kind of dictates what has the impact on where and the extent of your drawing. And I'll show you just shortly. And after overlaying this sun diagram, because I'm going to be using this information to draw the movement, the passage of the light and the time, and uh, along with other environmental factors like the wind, also like the view corridors, things like that. And you'll see, uh, you'll see how this will make sense. Step number five is really just to determine your drawing size. So you want to be careful with how the extent of the drawing, because in another video I explained when you're exporting your drawings, the extent of your drawing is, is going to be determined by how much your layer size is visible on the iPad. So it's going to be a maximum, a 4K resolution. So you want to show as much of the drawing as possible to the edge of the paper as possible. So in here, I am going to show you this next step which is the build up of your drawing base. And I'm going to turn off these other layers just so that it's a little bit clear. And uh, you'll see that if I turn this lower, I want us to make sure the drawing kind of fits around this sun movement. I don't want my sun movement to be smack in the middle of like, like the floor plan. So you kind of want to be careful where you place your or the size of this sun diagram in relationship to the drawing. And also this is an opportunity just to show you the size of the drawing that I want. I have created for myself. And you can see this by double clicking 
on this layer itself it now it's not as obvious as they could be because the background is a little bit dark but if you double click on the layer itself it's going to show you in this black box around it and that's going to be the size of your layer so if you went ahead and exported this as a pdf this is going to be governed by how much this layer size is and you want to be careful because if you're zoomed way out and your layer is way too big for the little of the drawing that you see that is going to produce a lower quality export so in here you can see i've decided the building the amount of site that i wanted to see just to see the the traffic movement the going in and out and i want to be able to overlay my sun diagram on top so step number six is just building up your base drawing and this can take a couple of layers but in here because i know this is going to be traced over on top with my finished drawings i've laid out all the trees and uh, some of the buildings in here so as you can see they're not drawn very in detail because i know this is just the base for me to trace over and then the next drawing you'll see that's created in the same size or roughly the same size is actually the environmental and the sun diagram and i think what's important to point out here is you'll see that this drawing if i just turn out the opacity a little bit it is actually slightly offset in the drawing below it because i realized i wanted to have this sun diagram to be more lower or to be lower than the drawing that i had before so you can see that there is a slight shift in the drawing this really doesn't matter when you come to export it when your layers doesn't match up like this so i'm going to turn off this layer to zero percent opacity and then from there onwards step number Eight is, I mean, this is a big step. This is building up your drawings with a more of a finished layer. So if I increase the opacity of this little bit, you can see this is going to be the size. If I just single tap, you'll see the extent of this paper. If I zoom out a little bit and double tap, you'll see the extent of the layer in black. So this is gonna be my base geometry for, for the final drawing. And then I've added in my buildings in here and then from there i've added in these environmental factors the wind the sun and uh, the view from there you can add a couple more layers if you wish or if you're not certain something's gonna look good i often would put it on a layer by itself so in this case it's just some of the ground textures that i have in here and i'm just going to turn off these construction lines and the last thing i did on this drawing for the line weight is i've added in the shadow because I think the shadow really adds a lot of depth to the drawing and uh, it also tells the story how the sun is moving. Now I know I'm showing the sun is moving from the morning to the late afternoon or in the evening so your shadows may be more kind of uh, interpretive you know maybe in the late evening it's more on this side but it should never be you know be coming from this direction that just doesn't make sense right so the shadow will kind of travel and move around as from the morning to the late evening sunset and from this point onwards step number nine is really just to bring in the color in here and you'll kind of kind of see like where is the coloring the coloring is actually placed below the line work and uh, i'm gonna turn off this opacity to zero percent and i'm gonna turn off this background just because it's just too much so the reason why it is placed below the line weight is i didn't want to set this coloring layer blending mode to multiply because i wanted my colors to stack on top to kind of uh, color on top and when you have this set to multiply it doesn't allow you to do that so that is the single reason why the coloring layer is set below the line weight so you'll see I have a overall color and I have a color just for the environmental and other signage. So this is really the entire makeup of this file. And you just can see there's not that many layers. So if I have to expand this layer palette a little bit, um, I'll show you from the beginning is I have the satellite view. I have these base images, which are the site survey and the aspect floor plan. I have a couple of layers for the construction red sketching if you will and then the really the drawing itself is built off one two three four five six seven seven layers so you can do this easily even on an older ipad that's not capable of having i don't know more than a certain number of layers so you can see this entire layer structure isn't more than 12 
13 layers. So this is a new feature that you can expand and rename your layer layers so you can stay a little bit organized. And the final step to this is to select the paper size that you want to export to. I also have other videos covering how to do this, but typically you want to export to a PDF with the best quality, and then I'm gonna hit continue. You don't want to export the PDF with a, as a background. So you wanna to navigate to the layers. And in here, since this is a file that I've previously already had the settings correctly dialed in, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn off all these other layers because if you don't do that, this is gonna be part of your export. We don't want to see these layers with just the drawing by itself. What we wanna see is this layer. And this layer currently is set to 24 by 36 arc D size paper in the US. And my scale is set to one inch to 20 foot. Now I could try a 30 foot one, but the, I'm risking diluting and re reducing the resolution by printing this out 1 to 30. If I do 1 to 10, that is too, too much drawing for the paper. So 1 to 20 sounds just about in the middle. And if your drawing is somehow, you know, in off to the center, you can just single double tap to move this drawing around. But since we want to see everything on here, let's just go ahead and export it to 1 to 20 and then hit export which will bring up a host of other options to, you know, airdrop it to your Mac, save it to your Dropbox, email to you, Slack, text message. You really have a lot of options to export. So hopefully this overview workflow for a compelling site drawing like this makes sense. Now, if you wanna see the full tutorial in the case study, that is part of the masterclass which you can find in the link below.